Aloha. It's January the 13th. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Welcome to Rediscovering America. The title of the show is Second Impeachment Vote for Trump. For those uh, who have been watching the television this morning, you're seeing a historic moment, the second impeachment vote, and most likely the second impeachment for a sitting president. In this case, within a year, a second impeachment for Donald Trump. You know, it's very clear to me watching uh, both sides speak their position about this impeachment vote. The GOP uh, representatives, they're doing their best to avoid moving forward with an impeachment. They're pleading and crying that this is going to divide the country further, that now all Americans and the House should unite and it's a new day. Well, I don't blame them because right now they're painted with shame for being the enablers of Donald Trump since the election on November the 3rd and, and, and supporting the big lie. What is the big lie? That the election was stolen, that victory was snapped out of the hands of Donald Trump and denying him his second term as president of the United States. That's the big lie. And they partook, they participated and they enabled. So no wonder they want to uh, forego this because they are also going to be painted with the impeachment, the second historic impeachment. Now, if you listen to the Democrats, they're accurately describing how Donald Trump incited insurrection of the Capitol. They're not mincing words. They want accountability and now is the time to get it. Because if you don't get accountability right now, you're going to leave the door wide open for the next would-be Trump, who's a lot smarter, a lot more stealth, and will be actually a worse autocrat than Donald Trump was. So now is the time to set the tone, set the stage. Donald Trump did incite the riot as if he was the wicked witch, the wicked witch that set the wild flying monkeys out to the Capitol, and he must be made to pay for it. And with that, we'll move forward. I'd like to introduce my guests, Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Stephanie Dalton. Welcome everyone. Aloha. I don't Aloha. know where that last analogy came from, but it came. And um, I have visions of wild flying monkeys, but that's what I they like were. It. Yes, wicked, yes. Wild and wicked flying monkeys. Okay, hey, welcome everyone. Hey, uh, Jay, uh, the question of, uh, that I want to ask everybody is, what is the most critical, important issue since last Wednesday to your mind? Um, that the Republicans haven't really relented. Um, you know, um, 147 of them voted uh, on Wednesday afternoon, evening, evening, and nighttime. After the, um, after the affair in, in the Capitol, they, they voted to overturn the election, even after that. And they're still there. Oh, yeah, there's a few defectors, but, you know, it's a handful at most. Um, there's a huge number of uh, members of Congress who still uh, enable and speak the lie, which I find extraordinary. There was some footage yesterday of uh, one congressman walking through an airport, and he was essentially attacked, um, not physically, but, you know, but shouts by some, some Trumpers. And, um, you know, I find that the country is like divided to the point of of a chasm. But I also feel that something you said, Tim, is that if you take the head off the snake, it's going to stop. Trump has got to go. He's the demagogue. Nobody else in the picture. They may be enablers, um, but they're not Trump. They're not demagogues. And so he's really, really, really got to go. But I think that if you ask, um, you know, what, what struck me most is that as so far, the Republicans have not relented. They're still there. Uh, they're going to vote against, uh, they did vote against the 25th Amendment uh, resolution, and they, and they will vote against impeachment. Luckily, um, the Democrats can beat them, but the Republicans are on the wrong side and they haven't really changed. I think the uh, one other point, and I'll, I'll stop, is that there's, um, uh, since Wednesday, they put uh, airport scanning devices, uh, security devices, and all the in the entryways in the Capitol. And the Democrats stand dutifully online 
um, you know, to go into the Capitol getting scanned and the Republicans refuse to do it. They push aside the guards, they push aside the Capitol Police, then they walk through in groups. And along the way they say, <clears throat> you know, it's my constitutional right to walk through without getting scanned. You can well, see that's their, an interesting their mentality. point, Jay, because right now there's suspicion that a few congressmen were complicit in, in with pre-knowledge of the invasion of the Capitol. Yeah, and there's uh, also that's been investigated. Also suspicion that some of them are carrying guns and they don't want the guns to be revealed on the scan, uh, which shows you where we are on the Second Amendment. You know, just to just, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just want to make one more point. The guns um, and these Republicans trying to get in, some of them with guns, uh, strikes me this, that all the noise we have heard in the past four years about the Second Amendment, um, it wasn't really about the Constitution. It wasn't really about, you know, protecting your home and family. It wasn't really about, uh, you know, going back to the Minutemen in the days of the revolution, none of that. It was about enabling people to bring down the government. It was enabling the militia. You can't do the militia. You can't bring down the government ultimately without guns. So, you know, we have a tremendous flaw that people didn't recognize that. And I'm very concerned that the second amendment is and was um, an expression of trying to have power over people without guns. Oh, thank you, Jay. Uh, my last comment to your, your statement there. I also think the Second Amendment is an issue very similar to the American flag, mom and apple pie. It's just one of the things that the GOP has so successfully wrapped themselves into and basically say, we're the true Americans and the Democrats are not. Uh, by the way, a lot of Democrats support the Second Amendment uh, as fervently as the GOP. So, all right, thank you, Jay. Hey, Winston, going to you, same question. What issue is the most important in your mind since uh, the storming of the Capitol last Wednesday? Well, it, there's so many things that come up in that, um, Jim. It's, it's that our democracy was, that the, the, the leadership of our democracy was literally their lives were in danger, that the toppling of our government was within minutes of, of, of toppling of, of people being taken hostage or perhaps even executed. This was a, a insane proposition for our democracy and all of those who are accountable must be held to justice. That includes the president, but you know, as we're as I'm looking at these um, these articles of impeachment uh, that have been uh, there and yesterday with the 25th Amendment, they're arguing a couple things. One is that Donald Trump is not um, capable of being president anymore. He's not dealing with a full deck essentially. That he's 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 not in his right mind. So uh, to later on then try and convict him and say he knew what he was doing. Does he even, I, don't, I think he probably believes his own lies at this point, so we can't, he's not dealing with that reality. I think it was important to have that discussion yesterday because people could air um, these very serious um, grievances that, that I, I can't understand why anyone would have voted against this or been against this well, when their very let lives me, were at let stake. Let me uh, jump in on that point because remember the Goldwater rule. Yes. Uh, Remember the Goldwater rule that you cannot assess one's mental ca capabilities or you know deficits yes. by observation if you're not a in the room with them and trained to make that determination. So the 25th uh, had a lot of holes in it because he hasn't been firmly diagnosed as mentally incap you know in incapacitated to be the president of the United States. And I think they're just going on the, the evidence that says he he does not recognize this. It was a fake election, it was stolen. There's so many, you know, and I, I just want to throw it out that we have Donald Trump to thank for showing us the massive holes and, uh, and places where we need to super shore up our democracy, whether it's literally physical structures, but more importantly, it is our, it's our institutions. It's our ability to call out this fake news that has enabled him, it's its its calling and holding his uh, sycophants accountable. And we've had a couple people ch uh, change at the very last second. Mike Pence stood up at the very, you know, two minutes to midnight as I read, but um, you know, we there's some really excellent articles out there. I just want to throw them out. Um, we must end the post-truth society. That's a, a story in the Washington Post. 
the only way to save demo American democracy now was in Slate on January 11th. And uh, I think a, a, an important one was uh, also in the post that uh, the riot happened because the Senate failed to impeach Trump last year. And, uh, and finally, yeah. in the Atlantic, these old evils require old remedies. And that was an excellent article. People need to read about this so they can understand the context of this, because it's very hard to try and process all the information. We need to sit down, recover our democracy, recover our nation, and understand also Donald Trump's numbers are are plunging. He, I, I read it, he's about 33% now. So that gives a lot of cover for Republicans who it looks like Mitch McConnell's going to let them um, you know, vote their conscience, but it won't yeah. be until he's out of office himself. You know, ironically, that's the exact same number Richard Nixon had on his way out, 33%. Isn't that, that amazing? Right? No, no matter what. It's the old thing, Donald Trump could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and get away with it. In this case, he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue or incite the, uh, the storming of the Capitol, and 33% will still support him. Isn't that something? Okay, yeah. thank you, Winston. Stephanie, uh, same question to you. What is the most important issue that you identify since last Wednesday? Um, uh, yes, uh, thank you um, for the question. Um, I'm most taken by the continuing uh, stalwartness of, or I should, that's a kind of positive word, but um, the, the breaking or the blocking of uh, any admission of guilt or concern by the president and then of his supporters that they're not saying that he did anything wrong. And um, I just, and that he did, and he said everything was very um, appropriate is, is just f filling my mind again with confusion, but I'm trying to get past it. One of the things nobody has said in the discussion, which I, I think is a is a flaw, they they um, they 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 lacked the topic of um, that the people were at the White House, they weren't at the Capitol. So I and there may be that they were going to, but the fact of the matter is that nobody has mentioned that they were at the White House. So that is why, and that's why he redirected them to the Capitol. So there's no denying that part of it. So I don't see that, and that ought to be more yeah. explicit. Well, that's where the, that's the, one of the many lies that he said that day, because he said, I'm going to be walking with you there. Uh, he, he stayed at the White House. He goes, I'm not going there. Oh, yeah, that's like the, the mentors for the suicide bombers. Yes. Like, you know, exactly. you all up here. Yeah, well, after you, sir. Okay, the other point is that they keep they do talk about the impeachment and the fact that the impeachment will also mean that he cannot hold federal office again and nobody is talking about the fact that most importantly he won't be able to scam all of you 33 percent for money because he will not be able to raise money and that's all he was looking to do he's not running again he'll be 70 freaking that's eight. correct You'll have four years to raise all untold sums of money. Yeah. Just like since November the 3rd, he's raised close to $30, $300 million for his PAC Saving America. Good point, Stephanie. Thank you. Excellent point. But I, I, I'm so glad because that's on my mind and that's helping me a lot because that, that's doing everybody a favor. And that would have been a part of his act going forward. And that would have been unendurable. Good Just point. Un that, that would have. Okay. Yeah, so those are my uh, issues. Okay, thank you very much, <laughs> Stephanie. I appreciate it. But, but just one more thing, which I'm sure you're going to get to. Okay. We're all we were thrown back into what I don't want to do, which is ask, well, how come or why? But the people hovering, cowering under the tables, hearing the shots and knowing it was so dangerous and their life, they are still going to vote no on the impeachment. I, the, the Republicans are saying in these short, brief speeches they've been making that they're not having any of this impeachment, even though they themselves were in mortal danger. Well, when you're sucked into a belief system, um, it doesn't matter what happens that is in violation of what you believe, you'll rationalize it. And they're doing that right now. They're rationalizing that Donald Trump has done anything wrong. And whether they were hiding under the tables or not, they're still, they're still with that guy. So, okay, thank you, Stephanie. Thank Cynthia, you. Uh, to you, the same question. Thank you. I was hoping you weren't going to change questions at this point. I, I wouldn't do that to you on this one. <laughs> um, this is my thing. 
They hung those Capitol policemen out to dry. They literally put them out in the front and they knew. They knew they were going to be overwhelmed. They knew they were going to be overpowered. They knew that they were putting them at risk. And I just, that just shocks me and floors me that, that would, they could do that. Um, so my biggest focus now is security for the inauguration. How do we keep Biden and Harris safe when we know that 33% of the people are out there just hungry to kill them. I mean, hungry for blood. That's what they're talking about. That's where all of those, you know, back alley um, websites, that's what they're talking about. See, you know, no problem. Assassination is still in play. When I saw that, I almost fell over. Now, the fact that the, the Biden administration still wants to have the, the um, inauguration at the Capitol, just I don't understand it. They did great on the, um, when we had, you know, the, the, what you call it, they were fine. When, and I got a mental block against the word, but uh, when, uh, when we had our, our um, Republican convention or our Democratic convention, excuse me, we did the whole thing virtually. It was great. Why don't they do that now? They've got more than plenty of reason. Now, I understand the point of, well, we don't want to let them think that they can muscle us around and make us go sideways on, you know, we want to keep our institutions together. We don't want them to knock them down. Well, by the same token, we don't want anybody dropping a bomb or anything else there when they know that's where it's going to be. And I don't see how it stops the institution of inauguration. They've got a lot of smart people that can make beautiful. Well, they are bringing in 15,000 National Guard. That helps a little bit, but I, I understand your point, and I think that's been raised by a lot of people, is why do this? But I, I think it is symbolism, and I think it is, you know, you will not, it's the same symbolism as the, the House and the Senate continued on with the verification and certification of the electoral co uh, college votes. You are not going to stop this process, and that's what they did. It's different, though, because that, the risk had already been handled when they came back and said that yeah, you're not going to stop this. This is gonna okay. Well, your point's well made. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good point. Hey, Jay, before we talk about impeachment, we got a question from a viewer, and that is, what about the security threat at all the 50 uh, nation capitals? And how is that best addressed in your mind? I think it's a valid threat. Um, and I think Biden should be very careful. And I agree with Cynthia that he should, he should be indoors for this uh, inaugural. It's, it's obvious that the risk of uh, injury or death uh, would be a, a fantastic disruption to our democracy. And it isn't worth it, uh, symbolism or not. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I, I treat this threat as real. Um, mm -hmm. We've heard it for at least a week. Um, we've, we've seen it on the social media where these guys are making threats and organizing themselves. They'll be there. And uh, what's, what's interesting, <clears throat> if you look at the crowd, this is really important. If you look at the crowd, um, they were dressed in sloppy clothes. They looked like, you know, auto mechanics or whatever, but they weren't just auto mechanics. They were from every walk of life. There were policemen there. There were military there, active duty military. They were from all across the economic spectrum, all across the social spectrum. <clears throat> I think they were trying to disguise themselves into a mob, but in mm -hmm. fact, it was a mob of people, you know, all, all over the lot. Well, that's a good point, Jay, and you and I talked about it yesterday, and that is you had all sorts of different factions. Some factions were trained and ready to go, knew what they wanted to do, and then there were other factions that just showed up not knowing a thing, but, you know, wanted to express their discontent. And so, the question was, why didn't they succeed last Wednesday? That's because they realized they, they went to a bridge too far and they realized they were going to be in deep, you know, deep kimchi, as you like to say, and they got the heck out of there. Uh, there was a few factions that were actually geared and ready to go. Um, thus with the evidence of a nylon tie handcuffs, they knew what they wanted to do. Um, and it fell apart. It wasn't well planned because the whole group wasn't a whole group. It was multiple factions within a group. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, at some point they got tired of hanging around the Capitol and doing that, and they, it dawned on them this was not going to pay for them. 
Um, and I don't think they were really focused on what, what we thought they were focused on. That is truly stopping the count and, right. and stopping the democracy. Right. <clears throat> and, okay. and they left. They, but my, to, go to, your, to go to your question, um, I, I feel that is, it's, a, it's a real threat. Uh, I think it's going to be better organized this time. Uh, and it's not necessarily Trump, but the people who speak for him, his enablers and his agents, and 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 loose, um, you know, un, 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 unaccounted for people all over the country who are who are um, right wing, uh, right wing violent people, the skinheads. Uh, they're going to organize this, and there will be attacks on various state capitals. It won't be a million. Um, but I'm concerned that you have 15,000, which I think is nice number, but it isn't really enough, um, may just wind up shooting somebody. This is like Kent State, you know, you take, you take one shot and all of a sudden the world changes. But in this case, both sides are armed. So it's as if Kent State, but the students were willing to shoot back. And, and all of a sudden you have a shooting war at the OK Corral and there's a lot of blood spilled. And I worry about that. I worry that about that concern. because it would tear the fabric of the country even worse than it's, it's already torn. And I don't know a solution. I, don't, I can't be optimistic about it. When this show meets again next Wednesday, which is actually inauguration day, we'll know a lot more. But going in, I don't have a good feeling about this at all. I don't think anyone does, quite frankly. All right, switching gears very quickly. Uh, we're kind of uh, winding down on time a little bit. Uh, the impeachment. You know, one thing that um, is a surprise to me is Mitch McConnell's position on this, that he's allowing senators and encouraging them to vote their conscience versus, um, you know, rallying the troops and circling the wagons and saying, you shall not pass with this impeachment. Uh, Mitch McConnell is not very happy with Donald Trump. Uh, Mitch McConnell knows that Donald Trump blew the Georgia election for him. And Mitch McConnell now has the next five years in the back, the back row versus the leader of the Senate. Uh, he has no, no affection for Donald Trump and no use for Donald Trump any further. Uh, what do you find most interesting about the impeachment proceeding right now and particularly what may occur in the Senate? As, asking me? Uh, yes. I don't believe McConnell. Uh, I think this is all a reality show. We're being entertained as we have been for the past four years. It's like uh, Lindsey, Lindsey, Lindsey Graham, you know, one day this, one day that. It's all entertainment. I don't. I don't believe McConnell. I think McConnell is into power, and whatever he, you know, whatever he does is to aggrandize his own power. If he decides that something else is more attractive from that point of view tomorrow, he'll change it. Notice he didn't say he would vote for impeachment. He he just said he would vote with his conscience. And well, and, and my I guess think... is that he he will allow it to go to a trial. That's the important thing. But, you know, okay. there's so many subtleties there. There are nuances. For example, when is the trial? The trial could be after the inauguration. So I don't have any great confidence in the Senate right now. Well, I, I mean, there is a nuance. and you, you've, you've identified that properly. And that is, Steny Hoyer said, the second we get this vote, we are going to send this to the Senate. Whereas two or three days ago, they said, Nancy Pelosi most likely will sit on it until Mitch McConnell's out of the scene. I think Mitch McConnell's had a few conversations either with uh, Chuck Schumer or Joe Biden to say, hey, whatever you send me, I will rally the senators to vote for this impeachment. Something well, that's as you said, Tim, the only way the country has a flying chance of success here, you know, of, of sustaining its democracy, at least in the short term and intermediate term, maybe the long term, is by, by taking off the head of the snake. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, I, I call him, you know, America's Hitler, because he's following the playbook Hitler had. Uh, he's lying, big lies. He's got scapegoats. He's trying to get the, you know, the public to go against long, long historical relations with scapegoats. Um, he is breaking us up exactly the way Hitler did. If you read up on how, how Hitler came to power and used these same tools, you know, the propaganda and the scapegoats and the big lies, repeated big lies. Trump is doing the same thing. And Cynthia, I disagree with you. I don't think it's a question of psychology. He's not crazy. He's just Hitler. He's as crazy as Hitler was. And, and he's, you guys he's, break news. And I think been he's, been, he's been very smart in terms of destroying the country to his own benefit. Right. Breaking news. He's been impeached bipartisan. Yeah. Well, they just did it. It is um, right off. My side implemented. 
So, okay, hey, thank you, Dave. In Winston, what's your impression about this impeachment and particularly uh, how the Senate may or may not uh, tackle this issue? I I'm starting to believe that Mitch McConnell will tackle the issue. What, what, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, as I was watching uh, PBS last night and uh, Lisa Desjardins said, it was it remarkable that information could come out of Mitch McConnell's office because it's a very tight, known for its tightness, and it's uh, that he was inclined to move forward with impeachment. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to read. He's been the power behind the throne these years. Donald Trump is not useful for him anymore, but he is facing the real reality of saying, what party do we want left? And for the, the vast majority of Republicans and people of good conscience and good faith who are conservative, who've been duped by this, by this uh, man, uh, Donald Trump, for these last few years, they can understand now this was a massive mistake on our part, whether we agreed with some of his positions or not. He has literally tried to take over the government. Whether there was some vote issues or not, we have to preserve our nation. I think that's the overwhelming majority of people. You have some unhinged people of, of, of any stripe who are willing to take advantage of the situation. There will be issues that come up in the next uh, week, but the impeachment will go through. It's interesting to see, because he'll be out of office, how that will play out. I think what will be more interesting is uh, he probably had a conversation with Mike Pence that said, you don't do a thing, or I will invoke the 25th, and, uh, and I won't pardon you. Um, so he probably will pardon himself on the way out, which will have to then be challenged by the Biden administration, because essentially it would mean that he, that he or any future person is above the law. And so it, it will certainly go before the Supreme Court where they say, no, a self-pardon is not allowed. So it'll be, it will play well, it out. It would be just a self-pardon. I, I imagine there's going to be culpability for Donald Trump Jr., and his incitement of insurrection. It'll be the whole, all of them, but but, but the impeachment, I, I saw Joe Biden said, we're gonna do a bifurcated day. So in the morning, we'll take care of confirming my cabinet choices. And at one o'clock, they can start the impeachment on the 20, on the 20th, actually, I think is what he said, or the 21st. So it will happen. He probably will be impeached. And, and Mitch McConnell's allowing 10 minutes, or I'm sorry, 10 days or less uh, now. Uh, he's allowing a week for, for Donald Trump numbers to sink even further, for more information to come out so that the American public can solidly stand behind uh, their representatives who choose to vote correctly to impeach uh, Donald Trump, even after he's out of office, so that he may never hold office again. But okay, he's thank you. he's already, he just got impeached as being indicted. So he, well, he's, uh, when he's the Senate confirms that, that uh, when it goes to the Senate, I mean. But yeah. what okay. Hey, you know, we're going to run a little bit over and I apologize uh, to our producer. <laughs> we're going to run a little bit over because I want to get this question out. Uh, let me go to you, uh, Cynthia. Donald Trump's brand has been tarnished. We have the PGA running away from him. Signature Bank, Deutsche Bank, they won't lend to him anymore. I don't know how he's going to refinance his debt structure. Uh, you know, we have all these major uh, corporations uh, going away, uh, Mayor Blasio of New York said we're canceling the contract, which produces about $17 million worth of profit for Donald Trump. That's now going to be canceled. Where does Donald Trump's brand name go from here? Very quick, a very quick answer if you could. Well, in my dreams, it would just go away. <laughs> but I believe it's going to keep going down. We've even got, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield and people like that that are going against any Republican that was involved in this. And all, they're taking back all of their money and stuff. Holly, they actually asked for it, the money back even. So I think it's gonna continue like, like ripples in the pool. And as it goes out and gets more and more people involved, Trump is gonna sink deeper and deeper. And then pretty soon he's just gonna be covered up. I mean, he can't okay. even live at Mar-a-Lago, remember. He doesn't get to live at Mar-a-Lago. Of course right. he owns a mansion down the road, but still, I mean, so things, doors are closing for him. And I think that the windows have um, gotten washed finally and we can all see inside now. So we kind of really, a lot of us already knew, but some people didn't. So what I pray for now is that more and more and more people will have the blinders taken off their eyes and see the reality of what we've been dealing with all this time. Okay, thank you very much, Cynthia. Stephanie, it looks like you're probably going to get the last question here. 
Um, same question to you about uh, Donald Trump's brand and how that's been tarnished, but not nearly enough, I don't think. And I think it's going to be tarnished a lot more. What are your thoughts on that? I agree. His brand is not tarnished. He's going to be used doing his brand, and I'm sure he's going to hit up Putin to get one to get that on a, a hotel in uh, Russia. So I think he's still got that going for him and, and, and go for it, guy, you know, focus on that. But as far as the money, it's the money that's behind all of these Republicans that have supported him. All, all of that is start, the flow is stopping. And I think that uh, that is key. Okay, just like they said in Watergate, you know, the money is the factor. And while the while the donors are getting dis, dis uh, they're disappointed and they don't like this attack and the, the violence and I think it's going to dry up and that that might make that'll make a really big difference going ahead uh, uh, for more than Donald Trump for for the rest of them too that need to have something to make them really think it through because on their own they're not going anywhere away from their own values and belief systems they need some contingency management and it's the donors okay. that have that with their okay. money. Hey, can, um one word, to the best of your ability, one word, your prediction for the next week, Stephanie. Let's we'll start with you. I think um, we're going to have the the tension of the inauguration because one it word. doesn't appear that <laughs> Biden. Oh, oh one word if you can. No change. Changeless, changeless uh, inauguration. Uh, sadly, I think we're going to all okay. suffer through that. All right. Okay. Able. Precipice. A tipping point and a precipice. Okay, Cynthia. Please, can I have two? Two <laughs> words. Virtual <laughs> inauguration. Say it again. What? Virtual inauguration. Okay, virtual inauguration. Thank you, Winston. Uh, you know, I'm feeling. I don't want to say it, but ominous. And uh, so I want to be hopeful, but I'm feeling a little on ominous. But as more stuff comes out, it would be hard not to um, feel like, wow, what have we just been through? And what are we continuing to go through? All righty. Winston, I want to thank you. I want to thank you, Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. The next time you'll see Rediscovering America will be on inaugura Inauguration Day for Joe Biden. That'll be on January the 20th, 2021. Look for us, 11 o'clock, Wednesday. I'm Tim Apatrell, your host, Rediscovering America. Aloha and God bless. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo.